Well, hello everyone. Uh, it's really nice to be here for the very first edition of Regional Reshaping Work event. Um, I will present to you uh, my study in progress um, now on platform cooperatives. Well, we all know that platforms are becoming a very important force in the society and uh, platforms like Uber, uh, Deliveroo, Upwork um, are really uh, growing with enormous speed with some of them being uh, worth a few billions of dollars. And what's mainly ascribed to the success of these platforms is their ability to grow by leveraging network effects. So the more users you have on one side of the platform, the more attractive is the platform for users on the other side. So more Uber drivers you have, the more is Uber attractive for passengers. And the way platforms are able to grow is by different price allocation mechanisms. So they will usually subsidize one side of the market in order to attract users on the other side. Um, so the logic, the predominant logic has been winner takes all. You need to get to the market, you know, need to grow very fast in order to capture it. And um, the way uh, platforms are doing this is by standardization. So if you notice the Uber app, for instance, which I suppose most of you are familiar with, whether you're using it in New York City or in Amsterdam, you will notice that it looks pretty much the same. So it has the uh, same uh, ar uh, platform architecture, it has the same rating system, and when Uber introduces a new policy, such as, for instance, a tipping policy, he rolls it out across all countries in the world. So by being able to standardize their services, they're able to very easily launch and uh, capture any new market. But there are some trade-offs to this standardization. So namely, uh, preferences of users are heterogeneous. And we have seen examples of these companies failing in certain markets where their size did not matter as much. So for instance, Uber has lost to Grab in Asia and it has lost to Karim, the Saudi Arabian startup, which he later on acquired, simply because he was not familiar with the local culture. So in the case to, uh, with Karim, for instance, Uber did not realize that in Saudi Arabia, nobody uses credit cards, everybody uses cash. And Karim, which had much better knowledge of the local market, when it entered, he was familiar with the local culture and in this way was able to win over Uber. And Uber is now, by the way, in the process of acquiring Karim. So there are really strong trade-offs between focusing on platform size and growing fast and focusing on a very distinct identity and the knowledge of local culture. Um, so there are two primary dimensions of platform value, and that is platform size, or the strategies for the growth of network effects, and platform identity, and that is distinct value offering. And platforms can compete in the market if they differentiate themselves by different identity. And we see examples of that. So for instance, you have a dating website, eHarmony, that selects out. So it selects users based on um, certain social level, based on certain education level. So instead of saying, well, everybody is welcome, like Tinder for instance, he actually selects out. It's offering very specific um, uh, identity appeal to users. Um, and one example where we are seeing this very strong platform identity or differentiation on identity versus size are platform cooperatives. Platform cooperatives are platforms like Uber, Deliveroo, and Upwork that are owned and governed by users, workers, or both. And we are seeing now this as a growing phenomenon around the world, and we can name over 100 now examples of platform cooperatives. And some prominent examples are Stocksy, it's a stock photography website uh, that's originating in Canada and that is owned by photographers. Uh, Stocksy select high quality photographers that also at the end of the year get dividends of the company. You have Partago, which is coming from Belgium. It is an electric car sharing platform cooperative that's owned by employees. Um, and as you can see, you know, with Soxy as well, focusing on really high quality in Partago, they always have some 
fair value offering, let's say. So Partago is saying we are sustainable, we are offering um, a fair sharing of car, we want to uh, be green, hence only electric cars are allowed and so on. Uh, we have a Helpen, which is a Dutch platform economy uh, startup, and it is for care services, for informal care services, and it does not have monetary transactions. Um, and Fair BNB, it is a platform cooperative version of Airbnb that is owned by employees. And Fairbnb as well has some fair value offering. So for instance, Fairbnb has a rule, one host, one house, because they think it's unsustainable um, that five people in big cities like Paris, Amsterdam, or London uh, would own five houses, be making money of that, which is at the end, you know, rich getting richer. So they all have some distinct value offering. And uh, what we are interested in knowing is whether, uh, how do platform cooperatives deal with this trade-off between platform size and platform identity? Because we know that at the end of the day, platform cooperatives also have to grow in size. They simply cannot compete in the market if they don't attract the other side of the market. But perhaps this identity can be a strong competitive advantage. And in order to find this out, we are taking four cases across four different industries. So the cases I presented to you, uh, across four different industries. And uh, we are differentiating them based on network effects. So whether network effects are global or local. Because you can imagine that for a platform like uh, Upwork or Stocksy, the platform cooperative version, the overall size of the network matters a lot. So you care about the overall number of users on the network. Because if you want to hire a freelancer of Zaya platform, or if you want to buy a stock photo, you care about the size of the network. But when it comes to a cleaning platform, like Helplink or platform cooperative version Up and Go, which is in New York City, you don't care about their overall network. You might just care about the number of users in your specific city or even in your neighborhood. And this is where platform cooperatives might have an advantage because they have this knowledge of the local culture, because they can appeal to the community. So we are differentiate, differentiating cases by the type of the network effects. Um, and I'm going to tell you now some initial insights, some initial findings that we have. But like I said, this study is still in progress. So, uh, one thing that we've seen is that identity definitely serves as a drive, strategy, and motivation for joining. When we speak to founders, we will hear that this has been the motivation to start the platform, that they want to offer a more uh, fair uh, value to its users, that they want to distribute profits more evenly, and so on. And we also hear that this is a motivation for users to join a platform cooperative to participate because they really believe in the model. So in this sense, uh, one founder of Partago that I spoke to, she told me it is very easy for us to get um, uh, the enthusiasts or uh, believers in this uh, uh, platform economy, uh, platform cooperative movement, uh, because once we show up in the market, these are your users that are already existing and they will come to you. Uh, but what's difficult for them to get is rational economic agents, if you will, people that uh, are really looking for um, what is the financial benefit for them uh, for joining such a platform. Um, so um, one problem that we see with platform cooperatives is definitely getting the venture capital to take off because they're simply not attractive uh, for investors. And this makes it very difficult for them to compete with platforms like Uber and Deliver because they simply do not have enough funds to invest in the price allocation mechanisms, so for driving the price down in order to attract users. Um, and we also see that type of network effects matters. Um, so global uh, versus local network effects. Uh, there is a different strategies to control the openness of the market. Um, so uh, where network effects are local, what I gave in examples with, for instance, a food delivery platform or a cleaning platform, um, the 
strong identity eliminates the need for strong membership selection mechanisms. So the platform is very familiar to users and there is no need to ward off members to say, well, you don't comply to our identity, um, you don't believe in our model. They will come to them simply if they believe in the model. So it is much easier to enforce identity uh, in this case. Whereas, where the uh, network effects are global, they will make sure that the selection mechanisms are enforced at the very beginning. Uh, so for instance, with Airbnb, which is the version like Airbnb, you don't care about the number of houses in Barcelona, right? Because you are not traveling to Barcelona, you care about the overall number of offerings. So in this case, the platform will introduce mechanisms at the very beginning, such as for instance, one host, one house policy, because they need to control the entry at the very beginning. After that, it simply spreads. Whereas, like we said, with the local network effects, they can afford this identity all along because they're operating in the community, which is very much familiar with uh, what they do. So essentially what we are trying to do is to map these mechanisms of how platform cooperatives can compete in a market, which can also be of use to platform capitalist firms, uh, if you will. Um, so some of the differentiation strategies that uh, platforms that operate on local network effects are using is strong identity uh, uh, enforcement and market segment uh, specialization. And uh, some of the global network effects is restrictive market entry. And they're also trying to make the platform architecture as such uh, that uh, supports uh, this identity. Um, so for instance, uh, sustainability will be a big driver. They will signal uh, this strong identity. Um, so some of the contributions uh, that we are making with this study is to the strategy literature uh, by uh, calling for, which has called for better understanding of digital strategies. Um, and we are proposing an alternative to the get big fast logic. Um, so it is not just about winner takes all. It's not about uh, growing uh, your platform to the enormous size, but it is also about having differentiation strategy and a strong identity identity appeal, which platform cooperatives are an example for. Uh, we are also contributing to the literature of new organizational forms by presenting platform cooperatives as yet another uh, model. And my personal opinion is that perhaps platform cooperatives will not become mainstream. Uh, most surely they will not become a mainstream, but they are um, showing us that there are alternatives to what we currently have. And platform cooperatives are one model, but we are also seeing models that are emerging uh, on blockchain uh, or uh, various new technologies. And I think that is what we're going to see more in the coming years. We will see many different models uh, of platforms emerging. Um, and of course, we are contributing to the platform economy literature more generally, as there is no extensive study to this moment uh, that is uh, um, uh, giving a narrative basically of platform cooperatives and what they're about, main challenges, and how they can overcome them. Thank you very much.